incredible. Let's talk about what happened in the market today on S&P QQQ, and we're gonna go through individual stocks to give you an idea of where we're at this year. So check it out, this is October. This is what happened today. So CPI was reported and we came down to 348.11 on the five minute chart, and I mean all the charts, right? But you can see it clearly on the five minute chart. So the drop was from 356.42 to 348.11. So a pretty good drop on SPY. Whenever it drops $8 or moves you know, $8 to $10, that's a big move. So uh, CPI was a lot hotter than expected. I mean, 0.1% hotter, but there was other little details inside the report that just investors didn't like. So the algorithms, the investor clicked sell all, and then they bought back. So today went flying from 348.11 to the high of the day, which was actually at 130. We hit 366. So that's a huge move. If SPY goes from 348 to 358, that's 10, right? If it goes to 368, that's $20. Let me tell you, on the options, or if you're trading uh, TQQQ or um, S triple Qs, those go with SPY or the QQQ, right, the NASDAQ, and they usually trade together, right? SPY and Qs usually trade pretty similar. So if you're trading one of those um, you know, ETFs or if you're trading options or you're trading individual stocks, Today, there was entries for you. So let me show you what happened. So as you can see, this candle on the half day chart was very, very large candle, okay? This candle itself on a 233 chart, so a 9.30 to 1.23 p.m. candle was 348.11 to 3.65. That is a big deal, right? That's like 16, $17. Okay, maybe even, yeah, more, right? Five, uh, 12, so yeah, I mean, we're talking, you know, 16, $17 on a candle. That's a pretty big deal. And then we did a couple more dollars, right? So it's just important to see that and understand what's available in the market, right? So we did get this big white candle, which is cool. We did get an entry on a 55 minute chart on this big white candle after this one. So you could have gotten in there or you could have watched um, the five minute chart for these indicators to do the three X, which, which happened at 9.50, came back and tested that at 9.25, uh, or sorry, 10.25, 10.30, and then just kept going up. So let's talk about, yeah, you see this 9.41 number and then the 2.64%, but let's talk about what it actually did intraday because that's what hides hides under a lot of people. The numbers hide for you, right? So it's not necessarily what this says up here that the market did, 2.64%, 3% move on S&P 500 is a pretty big deal, but let's measure that, what happened intraday, right? An intraday move of 5.27% from its low to its high, approximately, right? I'm not perfectly at the low, but let's get perfectly at the low, perfectly at the high, that's a five point you know, 5.29%, 5.3%. Um, that's a huge move on the S&P 500. Now let's talk about what that looks like in individual stocks, right? So we talked about the big white candle on the half day chart, this 55 entry where it kept going up, no red candles to scare you out. Indicators were going in your favor above 80 reset. MACD was getting spread and wide. Histograms were getting larger. DMI crossed like an alligator mouth like this. And then um, the five minute chart did a three X and then did a little test of that and just took off around 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Eastern time. So let's talk about individual stocks. Let's look at Tesla, right? Tesla is a mover. When the market moves, Tesla can move as well. So we saw on the five minute chart, Tesla went down to 206 today. Whoa, I mean, just a couple weeks ago, right? It was at 315, 312, right? 206. So we dropped more than $110 on uh, Tesla over next uh, over a couple weeks, right? I mean, right here on you know September 21st over here, 315 or sorry 313.80 all the way down to 206. What a sell off! Billions of dollars lost, right? Um, craziness, right? So Tesla bounced off 206, which it didn't want to break 200 today. And then there was an entry on the five minute chart and on the 13 minute chart, which I'm not showing right now. There was a lot more clean entries on the 13. And you know what, just because I want to provide that value for you guys, 
I don't want you guys to miss what is up with this 13. Hold on. The 13 minute chart really had honestly some better entries than the five minute chart. So here's a 13 minute chart. Look at this. Look at that three X, right? You see the line coming down, right? Stoke cross usually does a little bit before MACD, then MACD cross and then DMI cross. And then boom, we took off like a rocket ship. I mean, if you blinked, you missed this move. I mean, that's how fast it was. I mean, yeah, 13 minutes, 13 minutes, 13 minutes, 13 minutes, 13 minutes, but still that's like an hour and a half and boom, you know, or an hour and we're, we're gone. So the move happened in one hour. If you went to the bathroom, went for a meal, went, walked around, got lazy about the charts and saw, thought it was just gonna be a sideways, a down day, you were wrong, right? The market moves on these CPI and these federal, these Fed minutes days, okay? So when the Fed minutes happen or the CPI happens, uh, the market moves and it can move both directions very quickly. Let's look at the 13 minute chart. I'm gonna put it over the five right now because honestly, it was the better chart for entries. Um, that's why it's so important to have multiple time frames. Look at Nvidia. We have that red candle and then a bullish white candle. That was your entry right here when MACD crossed and on this new candle at 112, it did hit a low of 108. But like I always say, you can make uh, a little bit of money, right? Uh, easily or you can get greedy and lose a lot of money very easily. So right here is a entry on the 13 minute chart. Why is this an entry? Well, the 55 minute chart was building this huge candle. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the 233, the 55 already came out of um, a huge, this is called a hammer. It's a technical hammer, right? With a, a long tail with a candle body with a long wick or tail, some people say. And then the next candle tested half of that and then took off. So right here is your precise entry. That's why you want to have multiple time frames if you're trading within intraday trades, because you get this little, um, you get a nice precise precision scalpel entry, right? Like as a, as a surgeon would, would use a scalpel to cut the skin and get through and find its entry into the skin, right? You're going to do it into a stock. Okay. So this is your precise surgical entry right here on this candle the one after the um, this tweezer right here. And then boom, you have your MACD crossed, your Stoke already did before, and then the DMI crossed with, this, with the MACD. Um, it's very important to understand how fast things can move intraday. I mean, this move from uh, the bottom of this trade to the top of this trade was 12%. They tell you that you can only make seven, 8% per year in the stock market. That's if you're not aware of the opportunities available to you, right? If you put 10K on this trade, let's say you didn't get the whole 12% and you got in here, right? And you put in 10K, you made 8% if you followed the rules and got out when Stoke got above 80 and, and price got outside the band with the candlestick right there. Okay, 8%. Boom, like it's nothing, okay? This doesn't happen every single day, but you need to be aware of what people tell you is possible and what's really possible because it's amazing what the market is capable of. Let's look at Amazon. Amazon had a beastly move as well. I um, This is a, a level that I was watching very closely because I personally knew that Amazon was going towards the 105, 106 and I had some, um, I had some lines drawn on some other charts and I also had some um, uh, in indications that went away once I hit that those lines so they're not there anymore. Uh, some price traps, price indicators. So we did seven, six and a half percent on um, in on Amazon today, right? So if you bought, you know, 100 shares of this, you made five bucks. Let's say you got in right here. Can't get into the bottom. You got in right here, right here. Um, you know, you made five bucks a share. Great, right? Made a bunch of money. Um, let's look at another one, the sleepers, right? The Dow Jones stocks. Let's look at Boeing. Boeing had this huge, this is called a hammer outside the 55 minute chart. And they were actually talking about this on CNBC today. Um, very important, the technical guys look at the hammers. Yeah, we do because they mean something. They mean it's very bullish and a lot of people are buying from a low to a high and then it settled down right here. So on the 13 minute chart, we got the three X right at 11, right at before 11 o'clock and we took on off and we followed the direction of the half day chart up and we followed the direction of the 55 coming from that, um, coming from this candle 
outside of the Bollinger Band, which is really important, right? This candle was a hammer outside of the Bollinger Band working its way in, and you have to wait for this candle to close to enter on a smaller time frame because you need this and you need this to be going in your direction from 20 to 80 from you know from MACD crossing to staying spread and wide from DMI doing something weird to going wide you know DMI usually stays wide so it was a little weird here but you really want to focus on price stochastic RSI MACD and DMI is the bonus but when the red kicks up you know there's a move coming and then you find your precise entry on a tweezer on a uh, 13 and with a MACD cross, okay? So that was uh, Amazon, uh, Boeing, and uh, NVIDIA, and Tesla. Let's do one more, Apple. Look at this monster move, right? When people are buying, what are they buying? They're buying Apple. Apple is the gold mine, um, the crown jewel, as Warren Buffett likes to call it. And it just ran like crazy, right? 134.37 to a high of 143. That is 6.6% .6 with an $8.87 move. Holy smokes, that is a big move. So where was your entry? Where was your gain? Um, you'd get in somewhere right, right around here, not the low, but at a nice little entry on the 13. And you ride it up here. Boom, you made about roughly 5% on your money. And if you were using options, it's much, much more than that. So with options, I did do a video on options. I will be doing more videos so you guys can understand them. And a lot of other YouTubers do great videos on them. Highly recommend looking at options and how they can make you money, lose you money, and protect your long-term investments. So uh, with that, I just want to show you these insane moves today. I mean, blistering moves. Um, we'll look at one more. We'll look at Google. I am looking at primary like good long-term holding stocks, wink, wink. I'm trying to show you what's possible here. Um, these might not be the lows of the year or they might be the lows. Let's see, I mean, we're getting very close. We're really oversold. We're really um, negative and bearish. So let's see if these are gonna, these lows are gonna hold. I would imagine they're gonna be tested soon and that's really important to look at. So 5.67% on Boeing. Where's your entry? Your entry is on the 13 minute chart following the 55 minute chart. And let's see where your entry got you. If you got in here at around 10.35, let's say, let's just say 11.01, and you got out at, uh, and let's look at the time too, right? So like right here, it's 4% um, roughly, and you got out at 11.27. So 11.01 to 11.27, I mean, there was blistering moves in just 27 minutes, 26 minutes, to an hour right this big move where the money came in and bought let me show you it was on volume it was very important this today was insane um just such a wild day right so on the s p 500 i mean the big move was from 10 25 to 11 20 that was the big move right that's less than an hour um and then it was on volume on the five minute chart, you could see there was over uh, one and a half million shares traded like every five minutes. So that's uh, that was the average volume. And then I think it was like total volume for each of those five minutes during that hour was like three million or four million shares per five minutes. So that's pretty heavy volume. The institutions were buying. It wasn't Aunt Mary and Uncle Bob. So uh, thanks guys for tuning in. And like always, get ready to be buying your long-term holdings like the stocks I went over and like my list that I will sh I will share on the video. Uh, I'll share in the comments of the video. I will share my list of long-term holdings of what I'm gonna be buying or at least looking to buy. It's my list. I don't find a buy point on them every year, but I will be looking. So thanks for tuning in. And like always, please like and subscribe. It's really helping me build the channel. Thanks guys. Peace.